Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to talk about free body diagrams. So a free body diagram is a simplified version of a physical system that engineers use as a starting point for engineering analysis. So we're going to start with our physical system. This is actually what we're trying to model. We're going from that, we're going to build a free body diagram, kind of simplify the system into a diagram we can more easily work with. And then we're going to use our free body diagram to generate the equations of equilibrium in statics or the equations of motion in dynamics. Uh, so here is an example of a problem and a free body diagram. So over on the left, we've got a man standing on a ladder. So I'm assuming it's a rough surface down here, smooth surface up here. Uh, he's standing on it here. The ladder is going to have some weight too. So over here is my free body diagram. So some things to notice. So we have separated everything that is not the body we're analyzing. So here we are analyzing the ladder. So I only draw the ladder. I'm going to draw in all of the forces. So I've got normal forces, friction forces, gravity force. Uh, Fn is the force of the man uh, pushing down the ladder here. Uh, and I'm going to have, in addition to all the forces, I'm going to have kind of key dimensions. So I've got uh, some length measurements over here as well as an angle uh, I've got right here. So angles, dimensions, forces, the single body that we're looking at, and nothing in the background uh, in terms of other outside bodies. All right, so creating our free body diagram, we're always going to start by drawing a picture of the body being analyzed separated from all the background objects. So make sure it's just the body you're analyzing. Step two, you're going to draw in any forces acting on the body. So we're going to do have normal forces at any point of contact. Uh, so anything that was touching the body is going to be exerting a normal force. We're going to have gravitational forces. So as long as we have a weight to our object, we're going to have a gravity force kind of pulling down on it. We're going to have friction forces on any rough surfaces. Uh, so anything that ha is not completely smooth, we're going to assume that we have some sort of friction force that's going to prevent sliding. Uh, and we're going to have tension in any cables or wires uh, that we um, have removed from our body. So that tension force is now just modeled, or that cable is now just modeled as a tension force. Uh, so there's other types of forces. These are some of the most common, but we could have things like magnetic forces, um, or um, we could have something like a spring force on an object. Uh, there are definitely other types of forces that could be in there. These are just some of the more common ones you'll see. All right, so. After we add the forces, we want to add any angles uh, for the force vector. So if we are, they are known or even possibly unknown angles, uh, the you, when in doubt, you probably want to label it. And you also want to add any key dimensions. So what a key dimension is, it's going to make set more sense later on. That's going to be uh, more important with the extended rigid body analysis. Um, but for now, you can kind of label some of those dimensions. Um, like we had for the meters on the previous diagram. And once you have that, you've got your free body diagram. So let's talk about some of those forces. So first up, gravitational forces. So everything has some weight. Um, and gravitational forces are present due to the weight of an object on the surface of a planet, such as Earth. Um, so we're usually going to model them as point forces acting downward towards the center of the Earth. Uh, at the center of mass of the body. So if we don't know the center of mass, we're going to have to determine it. Uh, sometimes that's going to be given to us in the problem. So I've labeled COM, center of mass, for the, both of these boxes. Uh, and the force is going downward from that point. So in the US customary system, we usually work directly with weight. Uh, so our 60 pound box uh, is going to not need any conversion. It's just a 60 pound gravity force. Uh, whereas in the metric system, we usually work with mass. So a 60 kilogram mass, we need to multiply that by uh, the number, the small g, which is unique to the surface of the Earth, at 9.81 newtons per kilogram. And we're going to find, that'll give us the weight uh, force in newtons. So here you can see US customary, it's just 60 pounds, 60 pound box. Uh, for the metric system, it's 60 times 9.81 or 588.6 newtons would be the weight or gravity force here. All right, so next up we're going to have uh, normal forces. So normal forces, also sometimes called reaction forces, are the forces that prevent two bodies from occupying the same place at the same time. 
So they're always going to act perpendicular to the surfaces uh, and at the point of contact. Uh, so whatever body was connected uh, in our free body diagram, we need to replace that with a normal force. Um, and it's going to look something like this. So here I've got a barrel. It's kind of resting in a hand cart that we've kind of tilted back. So I've got my gravity force. I've already talked about that uh, of the barrels, the weight of the barrel. And the barrel has two points of contact. So down here uh, with the bottom of the hand cart and over here with the top or side of the hand cart. And so at both of those points of contact, we're going to replace the kind of background with a normal force. And so this force right here, Fn1, uh, is perpendicular to this surface. Uh, and then this Fn2 is on the bottom. And that would be that vector is perpendicular to this surface. So that is perpendicular right there. So acting at the point of contact, perpendicular or normal to the surface, um, any anything you have like that. All right, so another common type of normal force exists with connected bodies. And so this is like a purposeful connection. And these are usually called reaction forces. Um, so these connections exert normal forces. They are technically normal forces. Uh, and sometimes even moments to prevent motion in certain directions. So here are some different types of connections. Uh, so here we've got a wheel. So a, uh, a wheel connection or a roller connection. Um, you can imagine a wheel would allow for rotation. There's nothing to prevent this from kind of rotating one way or the other. There's nothing to keep it from rolling back and forth one way or another. Uh, but we do have, I can't push this into the ground. The gr ground's going to push back. So I'd have a reaction force in the y direction. So think about the ways in which it prevents motion. So the roller allows motion back and forth. It allows for rotation, um, but it doesn't allow motion up and down. So that's why we have force on the y. Here I have a pin joint. So imagine like a hinge on a door uh, or anything that's going to uh, basically allow for rotation. So I'm going to be able to rotate this back and forth. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to move it back and forth, and I'm not going to be able to pull it up and down. So I'm not preventing rotation, but I am preventing motion left and right. That's why I have FRX. And I'm preventing motion up and down. That's why I have FRY. Uh, the last one is a fixed connection. So imagine like a post that's just sunk into the ground. So this is preventing all motion. It's not allowing for rotation. It's not allowing for uh, moving this back and forth. Uh, and it's not allowing for pulling this thing up and down. So it's preventing. I have to have a reaction moment to prevent rotation, reaction force to present, uh, prevent motion back and forth, and a reaction force to prevent up and down motion. Uh, so these are getting more and more constrained as we go uh, kind of from the least constrained system to the most constrained system. And the more constrained it is, the more uh, reaction or normal forces you're going to have at that connection point. All right, next up we have friction. So for now, we're going to do a very simple model of friction. So chapter six actually is entirely about friction in this book. Uh, and friction forces are going to act between any two surfaces sliding relative to one another and will always act parallel to the surfaces in contact, uh, opposing the motion or potential motion that would occur. So it can be a complex interaction, but like I said, we're going to keep it simple for now. We're going to assume a smooth surface where we have no friction at all, uh, or a rough surface where we have uh, kind of whatever friction is necessary to prevent sliding. Um, so think about like Velcro. It's going to stick kind of no matter what. Um, so on a smooth surface, uh, if I have, imagine, you know, you got a, uh, a chair leg on an ice rink, um, it would have a reaction force in the y direction because it's going to be supported by the ice. Uh, it's going to very easily be able to slide back and forth. So I only have a normal force in the Y. As with a rough surface, so in statics, it's going to prevent it from moving at all. Uh, so imagine putting a chair leg on just like a really thick rug. It doesn't allow sliding at all. So it would have a normal force and a friction force uh, opposing whichever way I push it. So if I am trying to push this chair leg this way to the left, my friction force is going to oppose that. My friction force is going to push to the right. If I try to push to the right, uh, the friction force again opposes it and it's going to be going to the left. All right, so finally we're going to talk about tension. Uh, so cables, ropes, other sort of flexible connections are often going to carry tension forces. 
Uh, and these forces will always be pulling in the direction of the cable itself. Um, so if we imagine something like a stoplight, uh, so the free body diagram of the stoplight, I'd replace simply replace those cables with two tension forces. So I've got tension one, tension two, and they're going to be in the exact same direction as the cables. Um, so it is important to note as well, uh, cables can only pull. Uh, you cannot push anything with a rope. Um, it's simply with the flexible connection, it would not work. Uh, so tension is always pulling. All right, so just as a quick review, uh, creating your free body diagram, you always want to draw a picture of the body being analyzed, separate all the background objects, draw in all the forces acting on the body. So look for any sort of direct pushing or pulling, look for any normal forces at the uh, points of contact. Uh, think if there is a gravitational force you need to model, think about friction forces on any rough surfaces, think about te tension in cables or wires, and then finally, after you add the forces, you want to add any angles uh, for the force vectors and any key dimensions that you may think uh, may find necessary in later analysis. All right, so we go through. So again, kind of building this up step by step, uh, we've got our man on a ladder. So I've drawn the ladder. Uh, I'm going to draw in the gravity force first. So whatever the weight of the ladder is that would act at the center point. Uh, the man would be pushing down on the ladder, so I'm going to put in a force there. It would be a kind of normal force. Um, I'm going to have a normal force at the top and bottom, so the one at the top of the ladder is perpendicular to the vertical wall, so it's horizontal over here. One at the bottom of the ladder uh, is going to be perpendicular to the horizontal floor, so it is a vertical force. Uh, finally, um, I'm going to have a friction force. I'm assuming this is a rough surface at the bottom, smooth surface up top. So a friction force, if I think about how this ladder would slide, uh, it would tend to slide out this way. So the friction force is what's going to be holding everything in place there. So once I have the forces, add your angles and your dimensions, and this would be a complete free body diagram. All right, so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again.